the grants blow me for last. Ot I live blow here. Then at born him at mom blow me for Then mom blow me for la. Him live blow here. So him born him me. Me still live the place where him stay too. My name is uh, Alice Bulu Sakui. I have six children. Some of the nuts that we easily pick, they are planted by our forefathers, grandmothers. When they are born us, they easily share the nuts between us children. All of us who live here in Zaira, we own this land. Zaira, where Bulu and her family live, is a tiny community in the Solomon Islands, a group of over a thousand small islands in the southern Pacific Ocean. The village, surrounded by dense rainforest and accessible only by sea, is one of the most remote corners on Earth. The sea and the forest are the people's lifeline. We usually go to the forest, we find some wild yams in the forest. Sometimes people go to the forest, they just go for hunting of wild pigs. But we women, if we go to the forest, we find leaves for baking, for cut firewood. The forest, by filtering groundwater and holding soil in place, also helps maintain the coastal ecosystem. Healthy coral reefs and tree roots provide feeding and spawning sites for fish and seafood for the villagers. The local ones, people are just go look, gardens, bloomy fella. The forest or uh, the sea, the Nifala collecting moketa. And the forest products also provide a small income. A women, Nifasa Salem coconut oil, beetle nut, when Nifala go getting from bush, Nifa plant them there. Go marketing. Stack of things when we are getting from forest. We feel a save marketing for me for a little bit taking income for helping families. But communities like Bulu's are not the only ones with their eyes on the rich forest resources. <coughs> Valuable tropical timber is the loggers' prize. But to get it, swathes of virgin forest are destroyed, perhaps forever. Logging of the country's forests, largely by commercial companies from overseas, aiming to satisfy the growing global demand for hardwood, is changing not only the landscape, but also a whole way of life for the island's people. Solomon Islands may have made many mistakes about logging in the country uh, since it started engaging in large-scale logging back in the 90s. And so whilst it helps the economy, it doesn't really help the people in the long run. Reverend Moses Maizama, who ministers to many small communities on Bulu's island of Vangunu, and has seen firsthand the impact of unsustainable logging, says that forests must be better managed before it's too late. Or the result for local people, he says, could be disastrous. We find rivers polluted. We find animals which form part of the diet of the community started to leave the place. We find that even the reefs and the marine resources are starting to have the effects of it. It affects the food security of the community. 
and it might take years before it can come back to normal. Reverend Moses calls for better regulation of logging companies by the government to protect local communities. While laws are in place to regulate logging activities, he says they are rarely implemented. I am of the opinion that the government is not really responsible when it embarks on this logging uh, industry. They're letting the operators and the people sort out the agreements. And many times people fell victims to those agreements, not realizing the costs involved and the impacts. Julius Hurrier from the Ministry of Forestry disagrees. He says that laws do exist to protect the forest and the rights of those who live there. But as most land here is owned communally, ultimately it is the people themselves who decide whether to sell the logging rights on their land. It is the people who own the forest and therefore they determine what to do with their forest. And, he continues, there's no doubt that logging brings wealth into the country. The Solomon Islands economy depends heavily on logging. About 60% uh, of the GDP comes from uh, the forests. And when funds are tight, as they are for many islanders, offers from commercial companies to buy logging rights can solve immediate financial problems. A lot of the Solomon Islanders find it hard to meet school fees in the villages and at such. Uh, they attempted to allow logging companies to work on their land. One chief who steadfastly resists such temptation to sell out the rights to their tribal lands is Bulu's uncle and chief of her community of Zaira, Bishop Green Gino. He has been approached several times with large sums of money from loggers. Money is the biggest temptation. They did try me to, to bribe me with money. But the important thing that since I grew up with my daddies and with my uh, people here, that the land is not thing to be sold. It doesn't matter we are not rich, but we have to depend on the land for the future of our generation. Our young people, our children, their children's children, for the future, where should they go if we destroy the land? But Green Gino faces a dilemma. He knows that simply blocking logging companies from their forest won't work. His people need to also gain an income from their natural resources. Or they will be tempted to give in to lucrative offers or to leave the community to seek jobs elsewhere. He has come up with a scheme to protect both the forest and his people's livelihoods. A scheme he hopes will bring both visitors and money without harming the trees. First step, he's declared a part of the forest next to the village a conservation area. This does not mean that uh, I stop the people to use the land, but to use the land wisely. And this means taking from the forest only what they need to live. Any family can go to that community uh, preserve areas for choose one trees to cut and sell them for their school fees to help the family. And when the family needs a home, the forest, as it always has, provides. Every material is from me for the building, not just for the house, me for just taking the forest. Ah, sago palm, aloe king, and even tibas, me for collecting the forest blow me for the animal. Bulu's husband prepares the leaves for their new roof. The other village building that needs a roof is the new church. 
and harvesting timber for this is also permitted. In 2015, the village will celebrate their church's centenary, the community's biggest celebration for years. But Green Gino is clear on how this tree felling should be managed. Just take the one that you need. Not, don't just destroy the small ones so that you can harvest for the next year or so on. So they are sustainable. Working with Green Gino is one of Zaira's few college graduates, environmental scientist Vera Pulekera, now with the Solomon Islands Community Conservation Partnership, or SICCP. Vera also knows that simply restricting use of the communal forest to the villagers could cause problems. So that's why we need to manage it, and then we have to work on something that, is not, that will not destroy the forest but we get something that will uh, provide for us in, in the longer term. Vera and Chief Green Gino saw the potential to develop ecotourism. The acres of unspoilt forests teeming with fauna and flora and crystal clear rivers and playgrounds could be just the wilderness adventurous tourists are looking for. When they manage the forest, they need to get something out from it. And they agree on that, we, and we started to promote our local tourism programs here. So we, we call it our Echo Village uh, Stay program. Bulu was one of the first to offer homestays to visitors. They stay in a traditional village house and eat food plucked from the forest and the sea, which Bulu and the other women take turns preparing. People, everyone have to get benefit, and because this for a uh, conservation where me for a running him blow whole community or this for a place. Due to the remote location and treacherous seas, only a few determined visitors have made it to Zaira. And once there, hiking in the unspoilt forest is one of the main draws. But this is just a beginning. Finding a way to earn a livelihood from the forest that excludes unsustainable logging is a challenge. That's why the United Nations Forum on Forests, or UNFF, encourages governments and international donors to support small-scale ventures like this. For many communities, such as Zaira, the growing ecotourism industry is an opportunity to both preserve their forest and provide a sustainable future for generations to come. And that's our responsibility to look after our forest, manage our resources. I see that's the future. Why me for a strangle? Why me for a meeting stuck a problem? If logging him can't, then destroy him the forest. Never sell out the land, because people are important, and land is important for the future. I will never, never do that one until I die. <laughs>